On today's show, we'll be talking about how social media has transformed our relationships. Hello, I'm Shannon Skinner, and this is Extraordinary Women TV. Well, my guest today is Jen Kirsch. She is a dating and relationship expert, and she's going to be providing some wisdom and uh, pearls of wisdom and expertise today. Looking forward to it. Now, you'll meet her in a moment later in the segment. Before we take a break, I'll have my regular Good to Know Minute when I ask my guests for their top success tip, and you'll hear Jen's. Well, Jen Kirsch, it is so nice having you here today. Thanks for having me here. Now, you are a dating and relationship expert. You um, have appeared in many publications and media outlets uh, yeah. as uh, the go-to expert on That's dating. That's what they call me. Yeah, dating relationship expertise or, or advice. So that's fantastic. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Maybe you can give people an idea of um, where you're appearing these days. Yeah, absolutely. I have a show coming out on Cosmo TV called Love Trap. Um, it airs September 5th. I also do frequent segments for Canada AM and 99.9 uh, .9 Virgin Radio with Mad Dog and Mora every Thursday morning. Well, you are busy. I am busy. Now, you have had a really interesting career. I mean, let's just trace it uh, a bit. So you began um, you study broadcast journalism. Yep. Uh, you found a job in PR at some point, and then you, you did an internship with Good Morning America in yeah, New York. Yeah, absolutely. So that was a lot of fun. I got to go out and be young and have fun because I went to Ryerson Journalism School, which is in Toronto where I grew up. Um, and it was nice to see the behind the scenes hustle and bustle of the TV world. But I thought I would go into PR for a bit just in case I didn't get to where I wanted to be in the TV world. And one thing led to another and here I am sitting with you and doing all this broadcast stuff. So, so now how did you become, how did you go from sort of a broadcast journalist to a dating and relationship expert? And then how did you blend the two? It's still, I'm still shocked by the whole thing because who doesn't love talking about relationships? And the fact that I get to call it a job is amazing for me. Um, what ended up happening was I started my blog. It's Blonde Bronze 20 something. And I just wanted an outlet to share my writing. I always have these ideas in my head and I thought what a great opportunity to begin a blog. It's free, it's easy, and if no one reads it, no one but me will have to know because you could see all the analytics. Um, and I just started to write about living the 20-something lifestyle. And what I noticed was when I was talking about dating or relationships, whether they're romantic relationships or friendships, um, anything of that sort, my stuff got heavily read, heavily shared. I had people from all over the world reading my articles. And that's when I started to realize that maybe I should do something with these so-called writing skills that I have. And um, I got my first relationship column in Women's Post. And from that, everything just sort of skyrocketed and I became this relationship expert. So when you, when you, I mean, you have a high profile now. So when you're going out, I mean, you probably run into people who say, hey, I've read you or I've seen you. Yeah. Um, how does it feel now? I feel like I need to often be on guard because, you know, I have become a public persona, if you will, and so I need to be on guard, but it's actually really nice and flattering. Um, what I like to do when that happens is sit down and almost have a coffee talk with whoever it is and help them out in their relationships. And as we talked before we you know, started filming today, I've said the same thing, I'll get emails. Right now, my response is to respond to them, to help them. I genuinely love what I do, but eventually I think as things get more busy, I'm gonna have to pick and choose with that. Now, you decided to, or one of your areas of, of focus is the 20-something market. Yes. So your blog is called Blonde Bronzed 20-something. Yeah. So why the 20-something market? Um, I started the blog when I was in my mid-20s, and because I didn't know what I wanted to write about, I wanted it to be general, but I wanted it to speak to people in my age group, the types of people that I thought were going on to blogs that would be interested in this sort of stuff. Since then, my market has absolutely changed. I mean, with Canada AM, I'm looking at an older crowd, but I just think it's really important for me to continue to branch out. I mean, at first I started focusing on writing for women, and now I think I have more male readers and viewers than I do women, because it's as if I'm bringing them into the female psyche. 
Well, isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. What is it about the female psyche that you think is bringing them in? Are they trying to understand women? Are they trying to understand themselves? Do you think that they want to have meaningful relationships? I mean, yeah, I think, I think all of the above. Mm -hmm. And I think this is a day and age where we're all trying to figure ourselves out. And with social media, we're so available to certain things. We're so available um, to a sense of immediacy. And I think with my writing, guys could get into the psyche and know what a girl's thinking. But I write in a very casual way, the way that someone would speak to you, not this uh, professional, intellectual, doctoral type of way. So I think it gives guys this insight of what's going on in the female mind. Because I write in a general way and speak in a general tone, I think that guys could take it for what it is. And it's not necessarily like I'm telling them, you do this, and I'm not nagging. It's, this is what we'd like to be done. And because they're not being pressured into it, they're more likely to do it, which is a little trick to us women do sometimes. Do you think that, uh, you know, uh, so many young women now are focused on their careers and spending time uh, working or building a career. Uh, do you think that, that we're too busy to focus on relationships? You know, I think we are definitely very busy um, and maybe focusing on a relationship or trying to find one is not our first priority. However, for those of us who are quite successful on our own and busy and into our work, we actually make a really great catch for a partner because we don't have a need from them. We don't have a financial need. Um, we don't necessarily need them to feel great about ourselves because we're doing that on our own with our own personal successes. So I think we would be a great mate for a partner, but we need to take the time to find one. I think we're too busy to actually look for one, but we're not too busy to be in a relationship, if that makes sense. Well, so, you know, that brings us to, you know, really online dating, um, which is someone once described to me as probably one of the most efficient ways to find a partner. Right. For busy professionals, unless they're, you're going to meet someone in your, um, you know, within your social network, if you're not meeting them personally, then at least with the online dating, you can filter and you can just really cut through you know, the clutter, so Absolutely. to speak. Absolutely. Um, so, you know, do you think at that, are you seeing more and more professionals online and do you encourage them to do that? You know, I wanna be seeing more and more professionals online. I'm not seeing that many. I think there's this stigma about online dating that people think if they online date that they're seen as less than or not good enough or kind of a loser or why can't they find and meet someone on their own? But that's just not the case. So I think it's a great outlet to meet someone. If someone wants to do online dating though, they need to go into it and believe in it. If you say, I'm not gonna find everyone, I'm not gonna find anyone on here and no one's gonna be my match and I hate this and when can I get off this service? You're not gonna find someone. I think whatever's going on in our headspace is what we attract. So I think it's a great idea and more people should just get into it, check out some of the profiles, put one up and they might be surprised with what they find. Um, another great thing for women who are working and busy in the workforce is going to the events, um, uh, business, business meetings, um, different events, um, mingling after work, maybe mingling on a lunch with someone that you work with because it's such a great opportunity to meet like-minded people. And yes, it's so tempting after a long work day to go home and put your home uniform on, you know, whether it's sweatpants or PJs or whatever it is, but you know, you're doing yourself a disservice if at the end of the day, you want to find a match. Now, Jen, we're just gonna take a quick break uh, and that means it's my good to know minute and I know you've got a great success tip. Yeah, I think it's really important um, to be passionate about what you're doing and love it and to live and breathe it uh, in your daily life and your work life as well. I mean, your name is your brand and at the end of the day, all we have is our name. So if you're always aware of that and always breathing and living your job, you'll do great for yourself. Well, that's good to know. Yes. Thanks for that. Thank you so much. We're gonna take a quick break and when we come back more with Jen Kirsch, dating and relationship expert. So stay where you are. Welcome back to the show. I'm Shannon Skinner, and I'm speaking with Jen Kirsch, dating and relationship expert. 
and uh, thoroughly enjoying this conversation mm -hmm. with you, Jen. Yeah. Now, you know, social media has changed so much of our our world in so many ways uh, with this instant communication. But of course, it has also transformed our personal relationships. Uh, and it's also, you know, I created perhaps a tool for dating. Uh, but how has social media, what has been your experience and how it's transformed the relationship? I just look away because I'm like, where do I begin with this? It's transformed my relationships and so many people's. Um, it's crazy, it's so great because it's a great tool to keep in touch with someone and to flirt and stuff, but it could be so dangerous too. Do you want me to tell you yeah, some of the dangers? Yeah, so let's talk about how All dangerous right. it can be. Okay, well, here's the thing. Um, because things are so immediate, we could send a message and we expect once we've pressed send. Like a text? We, like a text message, okay. for example, or a private message on Facebook, perhaps even a tweet. Yeah, because you can't retract those once you, you send cannot. a private. You yeah. Done. And even after you send a text, you can't do anything about it, except yeah. if you regret it after hope it didn't go through. But, uh, you know, once you send a message, it's sent. And I think we then sit and wait and we expect something right away. And if we don't get a message returned right away or after an hour, or after a couple hours, we start to create storylines in our head. And then we message back, why haven't you answered my text yet? And then we may pick up the phone and then we end up looking like a crazy person when the whole time they were just in the shower at work or left their phone on their desk or in a meeting, etc. I think that we need to be so wary that people don't always have their phones on them just because we might. And once you send a message to just be patient. Well, what about Facebook? I mean, this is, uh, has become a really great tool to bring people together. Absolutely. And connect all over the world. But I'm going to guess that it, it probably 50% of that is, is, you know, damaged relationships and blown up relationships uh, uh, to the extent that it's brought them together. So, um, you know, there's a lot of, there's been a lot of stories recently about relationships going wrong and divorces and, and you know, people divorcing their partner, uh, creeping on them. And, yes. Uh, oh my God, I've seen it all. You know what? The thing is, is there's so much to argue about, unfortunately. It's, why won't you go on a relationship on Facebook with me? Why am I not your profile picture? Why did this girl like that you ate a new ice cream? Who is she? What does she have to do with you? You know, there's so many ways that we could look into so many things. Um, I don't blame people for looking into that sort of stuff, but I think we need to take our relationship for what it is. You need to trust your partner and be in it you know, it's almost like all or nothing. You're either in this relationship or not. And if you're going to look at these negative things, there might be something greater going on in the relationship. But yes, you can't help if uh, your partner's ex-partner reaches out to them in a message. You could only hope that they don't write back or don't write back something flirtatious, but we can't control that. Um, so I think it's about understanding what the situation is. Would you recommend Facebook be used as a, a means to for dating, to try to find someone to date? I would absolutely yeah. uh, recommend that. I think the great thing about Facebook is it isn't a dating site. So you don't come off as creepy or try too hard. You're not paying for a service that if you get rejected, you're feeling bad about yourself. I think it's a nice, uh, easy tool for you to use to re-get in contact with someone. Maybe send them a few lines and a message just saying, you know, Notice your stuff on my news feed, hope all is well, leave it open-ended, and they could have the chance to respond back to you. I think where people go wrong with it is sending a poke on Facebook. You know that oh, poke right, button yeah. that still exists? Yeah, those pokes. <laughs> it's a little passive-aggressive. I'm not necessarily all for the poke, but send a nice message, but don't, don't overkill it. Right. You don't want to be that guy or that girl who sends everyone a Facebook message trying to pursue them, but it's a great way to maintain contact or reconnect with someone that maybe you saw at an event um, or you saw at a party and didn't get the opportunity to talk to. You could check them out on Facebook, drop them a line, and let them know that you're a little bit interested. What about Twitter? Is Twitter a good dating tool, do you think? The thing with Twitter is it's so public. With Facebook, you could have it so only your friends see your comments, your images. Um, your status updates, etc. With Twitter, everyone sees it, even if they aren't following you. So I think you've got to be a little more cautious. 
Um, as well, make sure you do your research. You wouldn't want to be messaging or tweeting at someone who's very much so in a relationship because then you're going to look like the other woman, the mistress, you know, all those rumors will begin. So I would keep it to somewhere private to begin when pursuing someone. So, so tips on dating in a digital world then. Um, so when we're connecting through Facebook, texting, email, uh, whatever means, even if it's Twitter, um, once you send out messages, be patient. Be patient. That's the idea. Absolutely. Right, be patient. Just you know, let things take their time. You don't know what other people are up to. If they're interested, ultimately they will reach back out to you. And if they don't, you know what? They're lost. On to the next. And of course, uh, you know, overall, it sounds like social media is a great dating tool. I think it's if amazing. If it's used correctly, yeah? Yeah, if used correctly. I mean, I wouldn't go um, on Facebook after a breakup or on Twitter after a breakup and write tweets that are clearly directed to your ex. I think people see through that. There are other ways of coping, and I don't think social media is a way of coping through your relationship problems or divorce or fights with your family members or friends. Um, it's a way of sharing things and, and being happy. So I wouldn't you know, air your dirty laundry on social media because that stuff is around forever on the interweb. And you know, it's true, people do see through it. Yeah. Yeah. And then you, know, you want support from your social network and that's what they're there for. I mean, your support network, the people in your family, your friends, that's not what social media is about. But to maybe pick up some people or meet new people, it's a great place. Now, what about, um, especially for women, uh, what about being cautious when, when dating online and particularly using social media like Facebook when you don't know? I mean, there's, <clears throat> uh, there was uh, uh, a news story just the other day that uh, you know, there were many, many, many uh, bogus profiles, so you don't know maybe necessarily who you're always connecting with. I mean, what about you know, the dangers and for women, I mean, should they be cautious? Absolutely, always be cautious. For myself, I have a rule of thumb that I will not accept anyone's friend request that I don't personally know, that I haven't personally met, that I don't have mutual friends with. For me, um, I think that's really important. I share a lot of my stuff on my own personal Facebook and I wouldn't want to get wrapped up in that. So I think it's really important for people not to just accept a, a everyone that requests them or accept people to have more friends on their list. You right. know, you've got to be careful. You never know who people are. And if you're starting a somewhat of a relationship with someone online, an emotional relationship, messaging back and forth, it's important to, you know, set up a date to actually meet them in person, ask mutual friends about them, perhaps Google them, something so you know that this person does exist and um, get, get it offline sooner rather than later. So Jen, you know, with, with, um, with your career now as uh, a dating and relationship expert, giving all sorts of people advice now, uh, many people advice, uh, how has this changed your life? I think it's just allowed me to be so much more grateful for the experiences that I've had in the past. I think there have been some dating experiences that I had that for a while I regretted. Um, there's absolutely one relationship where I think I just stayed in it too long and I kind of let it run its course and I felt that it was really tough to get out of. And what I learned by doing that is I have all these experiences to share with people and help them realize that it's never too late to get out of a bad situation. It, it's never too late for really anything at all and I'm just so grateful that I have these stories to share to help other people who are in toxic situations. Well, what about older women? It's never too late for them to start relationships as well at any Absol age. Absolutely. Right? I, I mean, you know, we used to always say, you know, you have to be by this age and, and you, you've got to be married and have a ring on it and all this stuff. And the day and age has changed. I mean, most of my friends are successful bi business women who have been focusing on their own brand and developing their own brand and genuinely don't have the time to put into a relationship um, just yet but they want one, but they just haven't taken the time. So I think it's important, like we said at the beginning of this interview, to take the time to actually look for someone, because you might be surprised. 
Well, Jen Kirsch, we have run out of time. I have no. thoroughly enjoyed this time with you. Thank you so much. Now, your blog is, uh, what's the URL? I'm going to give you the short form URL. It's just jenkirsch.com. Um, and I could also be found on Twitter at Jen, J E N underscore K I R S C H. Perfect. Perfect. Well, best of luck to you. Thank and, you so uh, much. And providing all that wonderful advice to uh, help so many people have amazing relationships. That's Love the hope. It. <laughs> Well, for more information, uh, of course, about Jen Kirsch, you can also uh, find out more about her on my website at ExtraordinaryWomenTV.com. There you will find out more information about the show, past guests, future guests, uh, more about me, and you can contact me. Uh, and again, that's ExtraordinaryWomenTV.com. Well, if you are interested in transforming your life, I hope these stories inspire you. You've been watching Extraordinary Women TV. I'm Shannon Skinner. See you soon. <laughs>